Welcome all attendees to Global Compliance Panel's live webinar on governing systems used in clean rooms and control environments. My name is Ricardo and I am going to be your host today. On behalf of the Global Compliance Panel team, I would like to thank you for being part of this event. Today's webinar will be presented by Mr. Charles V. Geisick. Mr. Geisick is formerly of Hoffman LaRoche, where he worked primarily in validation, microbiology, quality, and operations. During his career, uh, Charles set up and managed one of the largest GMP clean room facilities in the U.S., encompassing more than 200 rooms in three separate facilities. Charles' extensive experience involves plant startup, clean room design and renovation, quality system auditing, regulatory submission writing, microbiology, equipment and cleaning qualification, utility validation, water system design and validation, uh, risk management, and regulatory inspection and responses. Charles is currently president of MIJ Enterprises, whose compliance division provides personalized consulting and training services within the FDA-regulated industry pertaining to pharmaceuticals, diagnostics, devices, and biotech products. Their core mission is to help clients maximize the benefit of a quality system in order to provide innovative product, products and exceptional services to their customers. We are honored to have such a distinguished presenter, uh, such as Charles, with us today to present this webinar. Before we begin, I would just like to inform all our attendees for the program uh, that we have outlined for today's training session. This webinar is for 75 minutes duration. First, Charles will take you to today's webinar, highlighting the areas that would be covered, and he would then share with you his presentation. Just uh, to keep our attendees informed, you would notice once part of this teleconference, you have been placed on mute and will remain so till the Q&A begins, that is towards the end of the presentation. This is for the purpose of avoiding discontinuity and for allowing our presenter to speak clearly uh, so that our presenter can maximize the benefit from this webinar. Uh, if you do have any questions that come up during the presentation, do take a note of them or send them uh, via the chat message to me. I shall gather up all the questions and we shall attend to all the questions at the end towards the Q&A session. The last reminder for our attendees, if you do happen to get logged out of the training session or the teleconference, we request you all to please follow the same procedure to join back again. Uh, now that we are ready to start, I request Charles to take it from here. Terrific. Thank you, Ricardo. I wanted to uh, thank everyone for attending today's session uh, on gowning and gowning systems that are used in clean rooms and controlled environments. I have a few slides to go through. Uh, Ricardo had already gone through my biography fairly uh, extensively. Uh, just the high points in my experience, I have uh, worked extensively in clean rooms uh, and with clean room garments, both uh, as a user and uh, as uh, trying to qualify different suppliers of gowning materials for the various uh, clean areas that I was responsible for. Um, I also had managed projects for harmonization of gowning schemes, gowning uh, purchasing, uh, gowning suppliers. So um, I was able to gain a lot of firsthand knowledge uh, by going out into the field and, and dealing with many of these suppliers of uh, both disposable and reusable uh, materials. Uh, my background in general, as Ricardo said, is in microbiology, validation, quality, environmental monitoring. Uh, the company that I have founded and currently run is MIJ Enterprises. We do have a compliance division. Uh, we perform uh, consulting and project management. We perform training, uh, validation, and general quality and compliance uh, support for our clients. Uh, I did provide my contact email as well as website on this page. So that way, if there's anyone that needs to contact me in the near future or in the distant future, that's fine. Uh, you can use these, uh, these contacts. Before we start the session, I will give a brief orientation of how I'm going to be using these tools for this webinar. Um, I don't know if everyone has uh, attended a webinar before, but I just at least want to explain what I'll be doing. So uh, I do have several tools. One of them is a laser pointer, this red dot that floats across the screen. I may use this to highlight. I'll probably use this as my primary um, indicator throughout the presentation. 
Uh, I also may at times use a highlight marker uh, to highlight anything if I think that it's an important uh, topic or an important piece. Uh, I also have the ability to use a pencil. Um, this may come into play if there are questions and I need to maybe annotate uh, or if there are other types of um, notes that I may make. Uh, in fact, some t I have had in the past uh, some corrections that need to be made on the fly, and I'll make those right there on the screen for you. Now, uh, as Ricardo mentioned, if you do have any comments, I want to point to uh, this area of your screen to the lower right-hand side, and that is your chat box. Uh, what you can do is you can send a message to uh, the panelists, for whatever your comments might be, if it's too fast, too slow, if you have a, a question. Uh, for the most part, I will hold almost all of the questions until the end of the seminar when we have the consolidated question and answer period. However, if there are questions that come in in real time that are very uh, topical or very timely, where I feel I should uh, address them at the time that I'm on a specific slide, I will do that. So if you have any uh, comments uh, to me, if you have any questions to me, you can use the chat box. Obviously, if you have any comments, questions to Ricardo as the administrator of this uh, webinar, you can send those also through the chat box. The last thing are your status icons. Those should be on the middle side, the middle right-hand side of your screen. Those status icons, uh, you'll see uh, a raised hand button, uh, a, a green check mark, uh, a red X, I'd ask that you uh, click on the red check mark, I'm sorry, the green check mark, uh, if, you are, um, if you're following me here and if you're ready to move on. Okay, I've got at least one, and I'm waiting for two other, one, one more person to click on your green check mark. And I don't know if there are some technical issues. Okay, good. We've got we've got all of you. That's terrific. Um, wanted also to just mention to you that I'm located here on the east coast of the United States, and we are experiencing some rather nasty weather uh, with rain and flooding and high winds and tornadoes. So um, if there are ever any instances where um, my telecommunications equipment malfunctions or or gets a little fuzzy, uh, please let us know right away so that we can uh, adjust as necessary. Hopefully, uh, the weather shouldn't affect what we're doing today. Now, without further ado, we're going to move forward into our presentation for the day. So our objectives. First, we'll identify what garment systems are available uh, to you if you are working or responsible for a controlled environment. We'll discuss what role each garment plays in contamination control and human safety, uh, because there really are two different roles. Um, we will identify and discuss good and bad clean room gowning techniques and habits. So it's not just good enough to have the right tools, but we have to make sure that we know how to use them. We'll explore the expectations of a supplier for clean room garments and garment supplies. We'll also identify gowning techniques and the sequence of gowning um, so that we make sure that we don't adversely affect the quality of those garments and, and their intended um, control. And lastly, we'll discuss clean room gowning tests and personnel qualification to ensure that we have evidence uh, that people are actually doing what they're supposed to do. Okay, so as an introduction, um, I found this quotation uh, that she wears her clothes as if they were thrown on with a pitchfork. And um, I, I thought it was funny, and it made me think about some people that I've known uh, who have walked into my clean room or attempted to walk into a clean room, um, and you look at them and you just have to shake your head and point back at the door. Um, you know, obviously we don't want anyone throwing their clothes on in a rush trying to get into the clean room. There is a very uh, specific way and very specific parts uh, of their garment that are very important to the quality of our products. So what are FDA expectations? Uh, first and foremost, they state that each manufacturer shall establish and maintain requirements for the health, cleanliness, 
personal practices and clothing of personnel if contact between such personnel and product or environment could reasonably be expected to have an adverse effect on product. So right here we have clothing, okay? So they state clearly that we need to have requirements for the clothing of personnel. Further, they go on to say that manufacturers shall establish and maintain procedures to prevent contamination of equipment or product by substances that could be reasonably ex expected to have an adverse effect on product. So this is a supportive statement, again, going back to the fact that we need to establish and maintain requirements for clothing of personnel. So I'm going to go very quickly through some background of the type of contaminants. And this is just to level set everyone that's on the call to ensure that everyone understands what types of things we're talking about uh, preventing or, or um, eliminating from these clean rooms and controlled environments. So I usually classify the typical comp contaminants into three major clumps. Uh, first would be particles and dust fibers. Second would be microorganisms, including bacteria and fungus. And the third would be chemicals, uh, which could include your cleaning agents, your products, or your raw materials. So particle contaminants, uh, you can break those into gross visible uh, particle contaminants like you see in this picture. Um, you know, gross particle contaminants include hair, fibers from clothing, uh, soil from shoes or other types of um, materials. Obviously insects, dead or living, and droplets of uh, any type of chemical, water, oils, um, human spit, whatever. Um, the other type of particle contaminants are those that are non-visible to us, or typically non-visible. Those are the dusts in the air, uh, floating particles, pollens that are in the air, uh, especially this time of the year, uh, mists, uh, cellular debris, and this would be uh, dead uh, skin sloughing off from humans or, or parts of microorganisms after they've been killed and cosmetics. Uh, I throw that in here as particles because some cosmetics do throw off particles. In fact, perfume itself is, is, a, is a particle. Uh, it can be counted with a particle counter. Microorganisms. So this is the second group, big group of types of contaminants. So uh, we have bacteria. Uh, if you don't know, bacteria are unicellular critters. Uh, they're not visible to the naked eye. Uh, they can be human-based, such as Staphylococcus from your skin, Streptococcus, Micrococcus, Cronibacterium, E. coli um, from poor sanitation, uh, hand washing after using a restroom. You have environmental bacteria, such as Pseudomonas from water systems, uh, Acinetobacter, and Aeromonas. So these are things that come in on soils um, or from the outside somewhere, uh, such as water. You have industrial bacteria. Uh, these I describe to people as being those organisms that we purposely use in our processes. Uh, e. coli is like the, the uh, poster child of an industrial um, uh, bacterium. It's used very frequently in the fermentation of uh, biochemicals, uh, other types of, of um, biotechnology made um, products. Lactobacillus is another one, lactobacillus being yogurt uh, bacteria. You know, again, it's something that is used industrially. Um, so these are the bacteria that we've said that we want to use in our process, but sometimes it's used in only part of the process, 